Welcome to Edutech 2021. My name is Amanda Frampton and I'm the Learning Delivery Specialist for Microsoft Education. I'm based in Queensland and it's my job to help schools and school systems and teachers to implement Microsoft tele technologies into their um, teaching and learning. So today I'm here to talk to you about supporting social and emotional learning with Microsoft tools. Uh, if there's anything that you would like further information on as a result of this session, please don't hesitate to reach out to me through Twitter. My handle's there, at mframp, or contact me through the Edutech platform. Uh, but let's have a look at what social emotional learning is and how uh, Microsoft tools can help uh, enable you uh, to, um, you know, with that curriculum in your school. So now let's have a look at what social and emotional learning is. So basically, SEL, as it's otherwise known, is the process of developing the social emotional skills that are vital for school work and life success. And that's um, from the Committee for Children, that definition. So, you know, it's fairly self-explanatory and what social emotional learning looks like in one school may look very different to what social emotional learning looks like in another school. There might be an explicit school program um, that is underway where students are, you know, um, focused on developing characteristics um, of a, uh, you know, a, a global citizen. Uh, it might be incidental where um, certain teachers uh, do activities uh, to check in on the well-being of their students. It might be project-based where teachers use things like um, Minecraft to develop some of their the teamwork skills um, that uh, relate to social emotional learning as well through a collaborative activity. There's a whole heap of things that Microsoft has to offer um, in terms of supporting social and emotional learning in your classroom. So what skills are we actually trying to um, develop in our students when we look at social emotional learning skills? You can see there that there is a list. Um, we want them to be able to make responsible decisions. We want them to be able to develop and sustain relationships and have the skills to be able to do that. We want them to be able to self-manage um, their emotions and their emotional st state. We want them to have social awareness and be able to um, have some EI, some emotional intelligence when dealing with people. And we want them to have you know, that self-awareness so that they can identify when they might not be in um, the right emotional state to complete an activity and then to instigate some strategies that um, you know will help them get to the right emotional state to be able to do what they need to do. Uh, so through you know the development of these skills we are also creating students that are going to be future ready because there has been some research and some studies done that show that employees actually say these skills are lacking um, in um, graduates when they come into the workforce. So that's why we're seeing a push for social emotional learning to be part of the curriculum it already is, um, but to really take a presence in the curriculum and, um, you know, for teachers to have the responsibility to um, develop these skills in their students. I don't think it's, it's, it's a bit of a no-brainer in terms of YSEL. Um, it's just to make sure that we are establishing, um, you know, these social and emotional skills in our students. Um, Many, many uh, mental health disorders uh, are, are, are originate um, in sort of the teenage years or start in the teenage years. So we need to be explicitly teaching um, kids how to handle themselves um, before some of those things are set in or when they have set in as well. But at a basic level, we need to maximize learning potential. Um, and to do that, we need to minimize stresses. So teaching students uh, SEL um, strategies to be able to manage their well-being, uh, to be in the optimal um, 
state to learn is is really important in schools as well and you might have heard the uh, the, the little catchphrase about SEL that's Maslow before Bloom's so Maslow's hierarchy of needs needs to be met before we can move into Bloom's taxonomy and get the students to be really thinking um, and uh, developing their their knowledge and uh, problem-solving skills so um, how can we help how can Microsoft help with SEL? There's a number of tools that we have in our SEL toolkit. Um, and the first one is Flipgrid. So if you haven't come across Flipgrid before, it is a free tool. Um, it's a part, we've partnered with Flipgrid uh, so that when you sign in, it's Office 365 sign in, um, and it's a safe social platform. And it's basically like a video blog. Um, so students have the opportunity to, as opposed to just typing in some text, to actually respond to a question or respond to a post um, by adding a video with uh, audio as well. So we are tapping into, you know, the um, the media that uh, young people of this age love um, and that social media kind of feel to really engage them in their learning. You can see from this graphic on the screen here that Flipgrid is available cross-platform. You can access um, grids, Flipgrids from your phone, from tablet devices, from iOS devices, um, and we can actually use this to promote social learning in students. So social learning is not a new way of learning. I remember learning about Vygotsky's um, theory of social learning and educational psychology when I did my education degree. But at its essence, social learning is the continue pro continual process uh, of learning from other people, okay? So we post a question, the students all respond with their opinion and their knowledge and they watch each other's and they learn from each other. So um, SEL has become really important in times where we are not together face to face in a classroom as well. So it's become a tool um, to be able to connect students um, when they're in uh, remote learning environments as well. And SEL has actually become more and more important in those environments because we're not seeing our students face to face every day to be able to make sure that they're okay. Uh, so the co really cool thing about Flipgrid is that um, it you can contribute to a grid 24-7, you can rehearse your uh, response before you put it up, it goes beyond the classroom, it's accessible, it's got immersive reader built in so the students can access the posts and also it's fun and engaging and the students can put filters on and put stickers on their posts and really customize you know, the way that they're expressing themselves through that platform. It can be overwhelming to start using a new tool. So to help you out, we've created a discovery library within the Flipgrid platform that allows you to go in and have a look at some of the activities that other educators and our Flipgrid team have um, developed for use in social and emotional intelligence in social emotional learning so that you can just pull from those resources and uh, pull them into your Flipgrids and roll them out to your students. So log in at flipgrid.com, uh, have a look in the discovery library and uh, start using Flipgrid today because it's a really great tool. One of the other things that you can do with your class is to facilitate social emotional learning um, through Minecraft Education Edition. Now, Minecraft Education Edition is a perfect platform for collaboration and basically being able to work in groups uh, is one of those really important skills uh, within social emotional learning and being able to manage those relationship skills as well. So students would learn how to negotiate with others, to co-play, to develop leadership skills and to figure out their own strengths and weaknesses as well. And the World Economic Forum called out sandbox environments like Minecraft because they incorporate several strategies for obviously building SEL as success requires students to be resourceful and to take initiative uh, to secure essential elements and they have to do that together. So Minecraft Education Edition is available Office 365 sign in. It should be available to you um, through your school licenses as well. And you can see here that a study conducted by Microsoft has shown that an increasing number 
number of schools across um, the S have used Minecraft across SEL and used it as an approach that builds skills and competencies that help students be successful in school work and life. So there are so many existing worlds and again to help you out we do have some that have been developed especially by the Minecraft team to be able to promote um, SEL but you can even have a look at one of the other topics that we have uh, presented on at Edutech, Minecraft and Esports, and look at running some Esports competitions um, and do some uh, builds, some challenge builds to actually uh, supplement your SEL curriculum in your school as well. So Mark Savory, who's gonna join us at the end of this uh, session to talk about how he's been um, implementing SEL in his school using some of our Microsoft Teams and Jason Lane uh, from Villanova College team up to talk to you about esports and um, Minecraft education in particular as well. So I think this next image sort of says it all. Um, you can see there that the students, even though they're not on one device, um, they're all in collaborative worlds and, and the looks on their faces and the pointing and the engagement um, shows that they're contributing as a team, that they are negotiating, that they are working towards a goal and doing what they need to do in terms of problem solving to achieve that goal. And that's what Minecraft Education uh, offers, Minecraft Education Edition can offer in terms of group builds. If you have kids at home and you've seen them, I know my two, um, when they jump into a collaborative world, it actually changes the dynamic of, of you know, the room in terms of the language that starts and the things that they start to do to actually build something together. So it's a really powerful tool to actually have in your toolkit kit for SEL. One particular world that um, has been uh, made is called um, the Mindful Night. Uh, so we can actually use a world in Minecraft to um, develop some mindfulness um, knowledge in our students. So this world introduces mindfulness, social awareness and self-regulation through a series of quests in a medieval um, world. And it was produced by a, a team of interdisciplinary um, game designers and uh, Minecraft hackathon participants and educators. And it introduces four mindfulness practice practices as well. Um, and it's focused around self-awareness and the management of emotions. So just to give you a bit of a preview, um, how you would access this, it's built into the Minecraft library. So this goes for the group work as well. Minecraft can be intimidating for teachers to actually start to use, but there are so many pre-made resources that you just need to move into that facilitator role with Minecraft and the kids will have the skills to actually use it. So you would log into Minecraft and when you go into play, you can see that you um, have this library of worlds in here. And when you click into the library, we've got our own social and emotional um, category down there in the bottom of the library. And when you head into that social emotional library, you'll see the mindful night world there that you can um, create and have the students participate. To give you an idea of what the mindful night world offers, I've just got a quick video of some gameplay in here and we're going to do a quick mindful breathing exercise together. As you can see here, students are then given the opportunity to reflect 
on their um, activity and the Minecraft Education Edition has built in Book and Quill which allows students to actually write straight into gameplay and this obviously has immersive reader built into it as well um, to cater for all students different needs. So a really interesting one um, if you're looking for an activity to do with your class um, in terms of social emotional uh, learning and uh, encouraging them to um, be mindful then a great place uh, to start is Minecraft Education Edition. Then a great place to start is Minecraft Education Edition. The next little tool that I wanted to talk to you about is the ability to praise, reward and personalize feedback in our software. So one of the really neat things that we launched um, a little while ago is some custom social and emotional learning badges in the praise feature that exists in Microsoft Teams and also as a sticker pack in OneNote. So if you are running um, a SEL uh, program at your school, um, then you will probably find that some of these stickers correlate to some of the characteristics that you're hoping your students will develop. So we've got things like uh, critical thinking, curiosity, thoughtfulness, um, respect, persistence, etc. So you can actually use those badges to reward for those specific um, behaviors um, when you see them being demonstrated. You can actually customize badges as well and and customize praise so there's always that opportunity to customize those for your um, specific SEL programs as well. This is just an example of how you can use uh, feedback in a class notebook with the SEL stickers to really customize that feedback. So, you know, this student has been uh, really working hard to improve their essay writing. So they were awarded a persistent sticker, which is one of the SEL values um, that the school program promotes. And you can see that the teacher's even um, given them some feedback there in terms of how proud she is of that student for achieving that. Uh, so a really great tool um, to plug into OneNote. And this is an example of the praise feature in, in Microsoft Teams. So posting to a channel and being able to customize uh, praise uh, and uh, broadcasting that to a group or a channel um, to demonstrate how a student has um, shown uh, some particular uh, uh, behaviors that you were focusing on. So praise is available uh, in the conversation toolbar it's this little icon uh, here and when you tick on uh, click on it it will take you through um, and you can then um, fill in your praise and allocate your sticker the next one in teams that I wanted to talk about is the reflect app I talk about this in one of the other sessions that I uh, talk about in team in terms of teams being the ultimate space for hybrid learning and it does allow us to check in with our students and to make sure that um, their well-being is you know um, well just that they're okay really and that and using it as a tool to analyze some of the data and make sure that we can check in with any students who may not have responded um, in the way that we are looking for so basically in the um, conversation toolbar this is relatively new and it will have been rolled out to your tenant and you can see now that we have this little icon um, that you can click on and as a teacher you'll get the opportunity to create a um, how are you feeling question there's a couple of different preset options in there for you um, and you can then get the students to respond based on emojis so it will roll out to the students and say how are you feeling and then give them a number of emojis it is quite involved and when you look at some of the literature and support on how to use this, each one of those emojis is um, broken down into a number of different emo um, emotions. So, you know, in terms of um, an SEL program, this is really going to help students start to understand what emotions are, um, develop their vocab in terms of emotions, develop their self-awareness of what they're feeling um, and how to express um, that 
feeling, I guess, in, in, a, in a word as well. So teachers can roll this out within Teams and ask students to respond anonymously or actually have it authenticated so they can see which student in responded in each way. And that would depend on your uh, context and, and the cohort of students in terms of how you wanted to run that. But then you get obviously uh, some analytics back on how the students have responded to that. So you can see here that 30% of students have responded and um, we're, we're seeing that we've got um, a mixture here of calm, bored, relaxed, pleasant and tired. So we might just want to um, check in with um, Guy in that he was tired and make sure everything's okay at home and that he's on top of his assessment um, in terms of um, you know everything that's due in the next couple of weeks. And then you can see here that we can track our um, reflects over time to see how the mood's traveling. So if we're moving towards the holidays, hopefully we would be seeing the mood kind of increase. Um, but if it was going down, it might be moving towards assessment time and we can then talk to our students and address that um, you know, data in a teachable moment. If you want something a little bit more customized, um, before Reflect existed, there were there was always Microsoft Forms and there always is Microsoft Forms. And there's a little template here at, that can be found at aka.ms forward slash check-in. So if you down if you if you follow that link, you can go and duplicate this form and it just allows you to get a little bit more detail from your students than the Reflect app is. You can duplicate this and then um, customize it as well and roll that out to your students through Teams or through sharing a link um, within um, you know, OneNote or via email or through a QR code or however you'd like to do it. But Microsoft Forms is another really powerful tool that exists in the platform to be able to customize check-ins with your students. So um, that's a really brief explanation of some of the tools that we have um, to help support social and emotional learning in your school classroom and with your students. But the exciting part of this presentation um, is uh, now uh, where I get to speak to Mark Savory, um, who is going to talk to us about what he's doing with his teachers and students at Emmanuel College. He's the head of e-learning there from P to 12. So uh, this part of the presentation is actually really um, interesting because I have got the amazing Mark Savory with me from Emmanuel College uh, at Carrara on the Gold Coast. Uh, Mark, tell us about your role and what you do at Emmanuel College. Thanks, Amanda. So I'm the head of e-learning at Emmanuel. We're a, a prep to year 12 school um, and my role goes right across prep to year 12. So I'm involved with lots of classrooms helping to bring technology to, to innovate, um, looking at ways that we can use technology to enhance the learning experience. So that's my real drive here. And uh, we're lucky to have Mark as part of our Microsoft Innovative Expert um, program. He's actually oh, one of our you. fellows. <laughs> uh, so he's always uh, got a lot to share and is a wealth of knowledge. But firstly, um, we're here to talk about, you know, some of the tools that are available and I've shown you some of those in the presentation already. Uh, tell us briefly about the importance of social emotional learning at your school and how you kind of um, go about it, I guess. Yeah, sure. Look, I think it's always going to be important um, in schools and it is important for us. And, and we really, we run a compass program that is really our social and, and values, I guess, that, that we embed into the curriculum, that we embed into our classes through uh, everything that we do. And so those compass points are things like, you know, having courage, um, and so we really drive that through uh, what we're doing in the classroom as well. So the students obviously develop that um, understanding of um, characteristics and you know emotional states through those eight mm, compass points, mm, correct. building that Emmanuel character, I guess. Yeah, we look at what would we like that ideal Emmanuel graduate to be. Um, yeah, and so we, we drive those values through our programs. Yeah, fantastic. So um, I know that you use a lot of Microsoft products here mm. and uh, Flipgrid is such an amazing tool mm. and you're doing some really cool stuff with that um, through grade three to five. So tell us a little bit about, you know, some of the successes you've had, um, you know, uh, um, allowing students to uh, be their best um, yeah. socially, emotionally, I guess, through using Flipgrid. <clears throat> Sure, yeah, look, Flipgrid is such a nice tool. For one, because it's easy, it's easy to use. 
Um, the kids love watching themselves back. Who doesn't yes. like looking at themselves? The digital age. Yeah. Um, that's right. But I think the nice thing that we've found too, though, is it, it just gives the kids that, that confidence and ability to um, really just talk to their computer. Um, you know, we, we've been finding uh, that we use it for things like even our, in music, we were using it for a recorder assessment where previously the kids would have to stand up and perform in front of their class, which again can bring a whole lot of nerves and anxiety yeah. um, in that process. And you don't always see the best in what the student is able to do because those mm -hmm. other aspects are playing a part in it where with Flipgrid, you know, we've got students that are recording um, their performance at home and they've got their dog on their lap or sitting next to them or they're out sitting under a tree um, in the breeze and, and kids can really focus on showing what they can do in that performance rather than having those limiters, I guess, of, of classroom pressure and stress. And then what's lovely is they can celebrate that as a class then and watch each other's performance. Um, and we found that we have got so much more out of the students because they're able to perform confidently um, using tools like Flipgrid. Yeah, and it's almost like there's a bit of, um, you know, mindfulness uh, that you're promoting through that too, because mm. the students can be present in whatever situation they're comfortable in to present and to yeah. show their learning, which is, you know, yeah. inadvertently SEL as well, which is really cool. Yeah, and what we found too is that that extends beyond the class experience as well, where, you know, it was a teacher just seeing that assessment to being, you know, family members involved. It might be a parent that's holding the camera to video them or it might be that, you know, they can download their recording and then send that to a grandparent or another family member. Um, and so that learning experience from the classroom can then be shared beyond just that assessment task as well. Yes, yeah, really, really social and everybody's learning from each mm. other, which is cool. Yeah. Um, I know too that Emmanuel College has been on its one note journey for a long time. Mm. That's how we, oh, we met. Love one note. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I came here like a very long time ago to run some one note <laughs> workshops for you. Yep. Um, and the schools embraced it. It's used mm. every day in the curriculum. You're running class teams. Um, there's a lot of uh, tools in teams that help mm. with uh, social and emotional learning. But you know, one of the the basic ones is the opportunity to give immediate feedback through mm. teams and through one note, whether it be the praise. App or, mm. or the sticker packs or just even you know the chat functions or audio feedback mm. Mm. so um, you know, what have you seen uh, your teachers you know doing with these kind of tools at, at Emmanuel in the in the classes yeah look I think um, one of the things that we love with these Microsoft tools is they do go hand in hand they complement each other so nicely so you know all of our our classes have a, a teams um, set up and then within those teams a lot of the teachers are using OneNote as well for their day-to-day -day, um, teaching and, and resourcing of their lessons and so forth but that ability to be able to give direct feedback to the students to give them praise in front of a whole class or just praise individually you know where teachers know kids may have been struggling with aspects or um, where they do find different tasks more challenging teachers can really utilize those tools to give praise um, and even within their teams, a lot of our classes are using the chat um, regularly as well so that that learning can um, go beyond just their class. Um, and even, you know, we have channels where kids can just ask questions and sometimes those questions might be answered by a peer rather than yeah. just the teacher. And so that collaborative learning is, is really valuable um, and students feeling more than just, you know, a number in the class or... Um, even for kids that, that sometimes don't feel confident to put their hand up and ask a question in yes. front of everybody, but are a lot more, I guess, used to and, and happy to just type a question in the chat and know that they'll still get their question answered as well. Yeah, like giving every student a voice and, and mm. that student still having the opportunity to give their opinion or ask their question um, and, and receiving the compliment, uh, the, the confidence, I guess, in that process as well. Yeah. And no doubt some of those SEL stickers in mm -hmm. the packs <laughs> correspond to your compass points as well. Yeah, absolutely. Because I know absolutely. there's courage and, sticker, mm. uh, stickers and um, perseverance. Yep. And I'm sure that they're quite common um, characteristics and values that a lot of schools uh, yeah. promote in their SEL programs And the ability well. to personalise your own stickers as well in, yeah. in giving praise is, is fantastic. So schools that are running different programs can really tailor that to you know to what they're trying to encourage in their students yeah fantastic uh, so the reflect app 
I know <laughs> that you jumped on board with the Reflect app in Teams uh, early on. You downloaded it from open source and yes. uh, on GitHub and, and had it running in your uh, environment. So it's now obviously available um, as part of Teams and part mm. of the product because it was so good. We couldn't let that one go. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, why did you jump on it so quickly? Like, what potential did you see in it? And and now that you've you know got it there, how is it being used at Emmanuel? Yeah, sure. So look, we really saw the the value in, in what an app like that could could really present to us to be able to get that feedback. And and what we found is that teachers have been using that in different ways as well. Some have used it with the start of a lesson. Some have used it. Um, with the start of a unit of work. Some have used it after an assessment piece as that check-in of how are you going? You know, where are you at? How did you feel about this? Um, and that's been really lovely. And, and even next term, our, our um, wellbeing staff are looking at how could we, you know, as part of our mentor groups, do a weekly check-in to try and get a better gauge of the wellbeing of our students over a term that each week, you know, how are you feeling this week? or um, you know, looking at, I guess, three aspects of, of how uh, are you going as a student, how are you going with your work, how are you going with your friendships. Um, and that might be friends or situations at home. Um, and that kind of information is so valuable for schools because, you know, if students are feeling safe and secure and they're feeling confident and comfortable, then their ability to learn is going to be way, you know, extended beyond when they're really struggling with things. So the more we can know about that and utilize these tools to get that feedback, um, it's really valuable. Yeah, and one of my favorite sort of sayings about social and emotional learning is, um, you know, Maslow before Bloom, right? They have to be mm. able to have their hierarchy of needs met, Maslow's hierarchy of needs before they can go and, and um, use the Bloom's taxonomy of learning to actually do mm. some really great um, stuff as well. So definitely important, even um, in the current environment when you're back face to face, mm. right? Because it was important in COVID, but um, you know, now that you're back face to face, uh, I, I, you know, there's been a um, ramifications, I guess, mm. of COVID, and we still need to be checking in on our on our students all the time, which is great. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, the last one I wanted to talk about is is the Insights app that mm. plugs into Teams as well, and um, I know that you're using this with your mm -hmm. teachers. What sort of um, opportunities for pastoral care and emotional support, I guess, have, have you seen Insights bring um, mm. to the classroom teacher sort of thing? Yeah, sure. So Insights is a great add-on to your class team. Um, it's there. It's readily available. Um, but again, what it does is gives you, as it says, insights into um, their engagement uh, with work that you might have said. It gives you... Um, insight into that sort of collaboration, mm. um, gives you insight into when they're working. Mm. So, you know, you can see if a student's online in their OneNote and, or, you know, utilizing things in Teams or even the chat in Teams from midnight to 2 a.m., <laughs> then you might need to follow up on that student. Or again, if there's students that are consistently not engaging in things, then it gives you that ability to go, hey, we can see that you know you haven't been engaging with this, is everything okay or what's going on? And so um, being able to use those insights into um, their work, when they're working, how they're engaging, are they engaging? Mm. Uh, all of those things, again, are, are, it's valuable data for, for teachers in their class. Yeah, and I was talking to another teacher that uses it the other day who, you know, one student came in and did a, they did the Reflect app and, and they didn't respond favourably uh, mm -hmm. in their response to Reflect app. And then she checked insights and that student had been doing their work until 2am in the morning. Mm -hmm. So it gives you that reflection to be able mm -hmm. to understand mm -hmm. why a student is in a certain emotional state as well, which is yeah. really, really powerful. Yeah, absolutely. So. Awesome. Well, um, thank you so much for sharing how you are using our tools for social and emotional pleasure. learning. Such a, an important uh, part of schooling these days as well. Um, but uh, best of luck with everything for the thank rest you. of the year. And um, it's a, always a pleasure to have a chat, Mark. Thanks, Amanda. Okay, see you later. I always love talking to talented educators like Mark, and I hope that that was informative for you. 
just before we finish up I just wanted to point out um, that we do have a, a lot of research um, in relation to social and emotional learning. Microsoft is committed um, to this cause and here are some of the main um, resources that uh, I have drawn on um, for this presentation. So you can follow the links to those there if you would like to. In terms of resources and the tools that I demonstrated, we have a course on the Microsoft Educator community called Social and Emotional Learning with Microsoft Tools. And you can go and uh, watch that one to brush up on some of the things that I've talked about here. And we also have um, our Social and Emotional Learning and Activities curriculum page. So the link's provided to that one there and there's a whole heap of resources there um, that will point you in the right direction in terms of what you'd like to do with SEL in your school. The only other thing is um, with the Microsoft Educator community, you do have the ability to complete courses and um, move towards achieving the status of Microsoft Innovative Educator or possibly Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert in the future. Uh, so to gain credit for this session, you can go to education.microsoft.com. If you haven't already signed up, sign up. If not, log in. And up in your profile, there should be a um, option to redeem a um, achievement code pop this code in there and that will give you some points towards your MIE journey so thank you so much for joining me today and I hope that this session has been informative and you've got some little tips and tricks on how you can um, just check in with your students and, and develop some social and emotional skills uh, within your classroom setting thanks very much and goodbye <music>